the Quran only permits fighting against those who prevent the people of God from believing and entering his religion and from abiding by God's commandments and from worshipping him. And God permits fighting against those who fight Muslims without reason and who drive the believers from their homes and their, ha and their lands and who force God's creation to enter into their religion and who want to annihilate the religion of Islam and prevent persons from becoming Muslims. Then the Prophet Messiah says, the fact of the matter is that the government, he's mentioning the British government, the government does not interfere with the religion of Islam and religious customs, nor does it use the sword to promote their religion. According to the teachings of the Holy Quran, it is unlawful to fight against such a government because it does not engage in any religious war. The founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community also declares, some wild and savage Muslims name the cruel shedding of blood jihad, and they know not that to confront a just ruler is rebellion and not jihad. Moreover, a person who breaks a promise and who commits evil instead of doing a good deed and who punishes the innocent is a tyrant and a victorious general. So this is the true Islamic teaching explained to us by the Messiah of Muhammad in this present age who was to establish peace on a strong footing and was to enrich the world with uh, an atmosphere of love and affection. Suicide attacks are carried out to inflict a wound on the soldiers of another army. But in reality, it is the innocent who are killed. This is wrong. It is the responsibility of the governments to secure the peace. Any act committed by a person who is not part of an army is not jihad, but a rebellion. The question I raised was the significance of jihad. And the response is that in this age, the jihad accepted by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the reformation of one's self. This is not a recent idea. It was mentioned 1400 years ago by the founder of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon his return from a battle, when he said that we are moving from a minor jihad to a greater jihad. And the greater jihad is the jihad of reforming one's self. And that is never ending and forever. The state of war does not last forever. True jihad is the reformation of the evils which are born in the times of relative peace and comfort. Serving mankind is a real jihad. And the 120 years of our history bears testimony to it. We are engaged in this jihad, whereas we are trying to bring mankind nearer to its creator. Our schools and hospitals, our plans for water wells and pumps in countries of Africa and Asia and in other poor countries, in far-flung areas of the world, are continuing. We are also helping those afflicted by natural disasters. Guiding us in this direction, the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community says, at this time, I specifically instruct my jamaat, that is community, which accepts me as the promised Messiah, that they should always stay away from those foul habits. God has sent me as the promised Messiah and has clothed me with the garment of the Messiah, son of Mary. I therefore, you, I therefore adm uh, admonish you, refrain from evil and be truly compassionate 
towards mankind. Cleanse your hearts of malice and spite, for you will become like angels through this habit. It is a filthy and unholy religion that is devoid of sympathy for humanity and polluted is the path riddled with a rancor based on selfish desires. Be compassionate towards all for the sake of God so that you may be shown mercy in the heavens. Come and I will teach you a way that will cause your light to prevail over all other lights. Abandon all lowly spite and jealousy. Be compassionate for mankind and lose yourself and lose yourself in God. I have come to you with an order. Jihad with the sword has ended from this time forward. But the jihad of purifying your souls must continue. I do not say of this on my own accord. This is indeed the will of God. According to the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, when the Messiah comes, he will put an end to religious war. Accordingly, I command those who have joined my ranks to refrain from all such thoughts, to purify their hearts, to foster sympathy, and to be compassionate towards the suffering. They should spread peace on earth because that will cause their faith to spread in return. It is written in one, in one of his book, The British Government and Jihad. So if we are engaged in such a jihad without hindrance, it is because of this spiritual system we, were, we are linked in as a chain, the leadership of which is in the hand of the Khilafat or the succession of the Messiah of Muhammad, peace and Allah be upon him. The attachment that members of the community have with Khilafat compels them to follow the teachings that had been brought by the Messiah of Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And the dead teaching is to honor and discharge the rights we owe to God Almighty and to his creation, to pull down the walls of hatred and to spread the fragrance of love and affection. Though <clears throat> through the excerpts that I read before all of you sitting before me, you who are educated, now that I have uh, made you aware to some extent of the true message of Islam, you should decide for yourselves whether Islam teaches terrorism or peace and security. It is neither right nor fair to condemn a religion merely because of the actions of a group or of a few individuals. So <laughs> I request you to speak out for justice in your respective circles so that an atmosphere of love and peace is created for each other. Your country is also among those who enjoy political and social superiority. Therefore, more justice is required from you. I now end this, this subject with the prayer that Muslims and non-Muslims carry the fear of their creator in their hearts so that they have good feelings for his creatures, uh, for his creation. Allah help us all. I am grateful to you for having taken part in this function and for having encouraged us in our endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you.